All right, great. So uh, let's pray, and uh, we can begin our classes. Uh, I would like to request uh, someone to please lead in prayer. Anyone? Okay, I'll pray. That, okay, I'll pray. okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, Father, Tarun, go ahead. Yeah. Brother, thank you, Lord. Thank you for uh, these classes that where we could uh, come together and learn uh, your word deeply, Lord. We pray that uh, as we spend this time together, we, we invite your spirit to uh, help us understand things. Father, help us to be open and to receive uh, the things that uh, we are taught and that we get to use them to strengthen our spirits and to grow stronger in you in advancing your kingdom, Lord. We thank you for this time and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Tarun. Uh, amen. So this morning we will, amen, we will uh, begin our course. I, I know that uh, you're aware this particular course is about the prophetic as well as the apostolic. So what we're going to do is we will start with the uh, prophetic first, and then we will go on to uh, studying about the apostolic. Now, for our study, we are going to use uh, the APC publication uh, called as uh, Understanding the Prophetic, which I have um, shared on your uh, classworks page. You can just go to uh, the website and from the publication section, uh, the English uh, resources, you can download the publication, which is titled Understanding the Prophetic. Okay, and uh, this will be the textbook that we will follow. So uh, I'll try as much as possible to go uh, in the order that uh, the chapters are in this particular book. So we will first do uh, the prophetic and then we will go on to the apostolic. Now, uh, the interesting thing is that, you know, the church, uh, as we see today, the global church uh, and, you know, the, the local churches across the globe, uh, many of them, they are uh, interested in the prophetic. We, we see more and more of uh, the prophetic, being released and uh, also uh, the the uh, knowledge uh, about the prophetic increasing uh, in our midst so you know, we we will get a little more of a handle on these things as we go along but um, uh, we can all see that there, there's more of hearing from god okay, and more of uh, walking according to what god is saying uh, Okay, in our midst uh, currently, and there is an interest for that. So whenever we, we use the term prophetic, uh, we are simply saying that this is about hearing from God okay, and doing what uh, God wants us to do. So it's not just uh, about hearing uh, to say what God wants us to say, but in addition to that, it's also about doing what God wants us to do. Okay, and this is uh, but a believer's life, isn't it? To to know what God wants for us and to actually uh, walk in those things. So every believer needs to be prophetic. If we don't hear from God, then you know how can we um, live a life that is pleasing to God? So we will uh, understand more about what this really means, hearing and uh, the following what God wants for us. Okay, uh, I think uh, somebody's microphone is unmuted. So if you don't mind, if you can please check and mute yourselves, I think that would be great so that there is no uh, disturbance. Yeah, okay, thank you so much. All right, so uh, when we talk about the prophetic realm, okay, and uh, I just said that uh, the the global church is growing in the understanding uh, of the of the prophetic currently um you know one of the things that we all recognize is that communication okay, communication um it could be in whichever form but if you just want to think along with me uh, about the words that people have spoken 
into our lives and then it could have been a very tough uh, situation that you and i were going through and uh, maybe a family member or a dear friend uh, came to us and spoke some encouraging words who said something like don't worry it will be okay or you will be fine god is with you you know I, I, can you connect with that you know we've all had situations where people have spoken in this manner into our lives and you know it brought so much of meaning it brought encouragement it brought uh, a blessing it brought strength into us you know in those moments so just a few words can make a world of a difference to us and when we speak words of encouragement into other people's lives that has a similar effect we uh, find that people are uh, encouraged to go on uh, with their lives to you know rise up and, and do great things so words are very powerful you know words uh, can bring encouragement they could can also bring us counsel at a time when we really don't know what to do uh words can bring in that that uh, enlightenment and uh, from darkness suddenly we know how to go about doing things so they can bring counsel they can bring direction they can bring hope uh, into our lives and so if the human words that we hear and the human words that we speak are so valuable so how much more the life transforming word of god that is spoken into our being now when we talk about the prophetic you now sometimes we uh, have this understanding that it's all about god saying something from heaven uh, in the now and and that's about it however we will see as we study this uh, subject on the prophetic that god's primary communication is through his word his revealed word uh, or what we call as logos okay so from the written revealed word of god we receive god's communication now in addition to that we depend on the ministry of the holy spirit now the holy spirit um uh, bears witness with our spirit and brings god's word alive he uh, directs us and he points uh, out the the very specifics that god wants for us in a given time so we have the written word of god which forms our foundation but in addition to that the ministry of the holy spirit is uh, is something that we also rely on for uh, hearing from god and we can say that above this foundation or you know on this foundation comes in the uh, now word of god or which we generally call as the prophetic word or the word that is spoken uh, you know right now currently uh, related to our situation or our circumstance you know that comes in and it fits in uh, actually with the logos or the revealed word of god the work of the holy spirit and then of course you know you have the prophetic word we will see later on as to how all this is so much in harmony uh, and that you know we cannot have the prophetic word without having the basis or the foundation uh, of uh, uh, you know these 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 basics now when we look at what god is doing in the world and in the the church Okay, or his body. You know, we've studied about uh, the moves of God, you know, the restorative moves of God. Okay, uh, just want to quickly ask if uh, everyone's okay. If you're able to hear me fine and uh, understand what I'm saying, yeah. So far, uh, is everyone good? Okay, great. Okay, that's nice. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> 
that's good okay let's continue uh, so basically i am uh, sharing from the apc publication understanding the prophetic so if you are wondering you know where we are uh, we we've just started uh, from our notes uh, and uh, i am on page 2 of the notes actually so yeah the introduction part so i was saying that uh, the 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 church he has seen the restorative moves of god we've seen how god has led the church through a journey of increase uh, from the dark ages and we've seen that spiritual increase coming in um, in the form of a uh, revelation okay, about various um, truths so we've seen the revelation about um, you know holiness we've seen the revelation about the work of the holy spirit and then you know lay in the most recent move of god that we've talked about the pentecostal movement we've talked about you know the the gifts of the holy spirit the baptism in the holy spirit and and so god has been restoring uh, these these truths to the a church uh, and strengthening the church and uh, from uh, the year 2000 you could also say that there is a strong emphasis on the uh, fivefold ministry offices and the functions right of the fivefold ministry offices but not just the ministry offices now talking about the prophetic office and the restoration of the office of the prophet you know, we also see that uh, the prophetic as such right is is being restored and, and i've uh, already uh, told us that we are going to touch on the apostolic very soon okay so that will in involve us understanding how god is restoring the apostolic to the entire church and the apostolic office as well okay and this is something we will study later on but you know overall the church body you could say that uh, this this um importance that we have to hear from god that uh, we we are gaining perspective on that and uh, we are learning how to do this better so when we talk about the prophetic you know, sometimes we uh, are very focused only on the office of the prophet or you know we we talk about uh, somebody being a prophet however it's not limited only to the office of a prophet there is a progression okay, that that will help us understand the prophetic uh, prophetic ministry okay so this progression it's uh, beautifully uh, uh, depicted for us on page 3 there is a uh, uh, you know like a, a diagram there that you can look at and that uh, gives us a um, clarity that gives us clarity on how the prophetic realm really works so what we see here is we see that the lowest rung of the ladder would be the gift of prophecy okay it is the gift of prophecy uh, and when you know anyone is in christ jesus we see uh, god promising every believer the uh, work of the holy spirit the gifts of the holy spirit so the gifts of the holy spirit are released in the life of every believer it's available for every believer so all believers can actually access this basic or you you would say the the you know most uh, rud rudimentary or, or 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 the lowest rung of the ladder the the gift of prophecy so all believers can flow in the gift of prophecy we have several scriptures okay that back this up uh, and we will talk more about it later also first corinthians chapter 12 i'm just giving you the references verses 7 through 10 and again you know uh, verse 31 that's another verse to look at that uh, says that all believers can flow in prophecy and again in you know, 1st corinthians 14:1 and verse 31 so you know, here paul is uh, instructing the corinthian church on the right way in which the gifts of the spirit should be practiced and you know as he is uh, talking to them he he uh, says that you know everyone you can you can prophesy one by one but this is how you must do it okay and then he has all these instructions so when you see 
the the way he speaks he says all of you can prophesy if you have a word you can prophesy but follow this order so even he is uh, uh, speaking to the corinthian church and as he's speaking to the corinthian church we realize that he's not pointing out um, that the gift of prophecy is only given to a, a certain select few and also again you know first corinthians 14 1 uh, where he says earnestly desire the gifts so god uh, is a god who wants us to desire when he will give something to us you know god never really says okay you desire but i'm not going to give it to you okay it doesn't work in the kingdom of god when god calls us to something to desire something it means that there is a provision for that in the kingdom so you know first corinthians 14 1 and again first corinthians uh, uh, was uh, 14 and was 31 there we see paul encouraging the believer to flow in the gift of prophecy so we understand that believers all believers can prophesy okay uh, i i am not going into the verses you could uh, take time to read through the verses uh, by yourself uh, later on so the understanding is that all believers can flow in the gift of prophecy so when a believer begins to flow in the gift of prophecy we term that believer as a prophesying believer okay and uh, how can a believer do this not by uh, or on his own or it's not out of uh, some inherent ability that you and i possess not at all this is only possible because of the holy spirit and prophecy is a gift of the holy spirit and so through the gift of the holy spirit any believer can be a prophesying believer when he learns to flow in this gift okay now we also see in scripture that one can not just be a prophesying believer but can also have a ministry a prophetic ministry you know when we read about the functions that are available in the body of christ this is in the passage romans chapter 12 you know verses 4 through 8 where we we read that believers have various responsibilities you know that have been entrusted to them some uh, are good with the area of helps administration leadership um, you know encouragement giving uh, but also prophesying or prophetic ministry so you know here we gain the understanding that there is a specific ministry as well which is given to believers and that can be a prophetic ministry okay so we are building on our understanding what we just said is that all believers can flow in the prophetic gift and that would be basic but over and above no there is something called as the prophetic ministry which is given to certain believers okay so that simply means that they are able to prophesy they are able to uh, impart the prophetic you know uh, out of their ministry a whole lot more compared to a regular believer so so they carry a prophetic ministry okay so uh, this would be you could also term it as a prophetic ministry or the grace gift we use the term grace gift of prophecy over somebody's life now beyond this there is what is known as the prophetic office and the diagram that i uh, spoke about that gives you clarity if you're just if you're looking at it as i'm talking you, know, you would know what i'm uh, trying to explain so some are chosen into the office of the prophet and you know all of us are familiar with ephesians chapter 4 uh, uh, the passage from uh, verse 11 through 13 which talks about the lord jesus giving gifts to the church you know and and uh, giving us the fivefold ministry offices out of which one is that of a prophet now who is a prophet you know a prophet is a, a person who has been called by god for this role uh, of ministering the prophetic and the prophet is somebody who uh, carries more than just 
you know like a grace gift of prophecy now somebody who has a grace gift of prophecy uh, or in other words the prophetic ministry who has a prophetic ministry you would see that the prophetic is part of whatever they do now you know they could be called um uh in in uh, a secular sort of a workspace or they could be in the church uh, uh leading worship maybe i'm just giving you an example but as a leading worship they're very prophetic right so they hear from god they sing songs uh that are uh in the now they hear from heaven and they sing those songs or the music that they play is very it's it's not just you know you pick up a set of songs and you go ahead and 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 sing them play that music no but they are really hearing from god and they are releasing uh what communication they are receiving from god so it's a prophetic ministry right which they are carrying it's more than uh just being a prophesying believer now the prophetic ministry we understood that the office of a prophet get the office of a prophet somebody who is functioning in that capacity you know we generally use the term governmental responsibility and authority for the uh, offices so whether uh, you are uh, an apostle a prophet a teacher an evangelist a pastor you know god calls people in the office with governmental responsibility and authority so this means that uh, their responsibility is greater than a prophesying believer uh, a prophet's responsibility is greater than the one who carries a prophetic ministry uh, and you know many of these prophets you would see that uh, they are functioning more in the area of um, laying strong doctrinal foundations uh, they are moving very powerfully in hearing from god and announcing new moves uh, of god that can be directives you know from the holy spirit that which they uh, could be releasing and this uh, uh, would have to do not just with a small group of believers but you know they might be prophesying to um, a, a region they might be prophesying to uh, you know a good section of the body of christ so the carrying that responsibility on their lives and along with that comes the authority that god gives them you know to release uh, words that affect you know the uh, the body of christ at large so uh, the people who have been appointed at, as prophets okay uh, they carry a huge responsibility you know they are also the the ones who um can can bring in resolution right uh, in uh, in certain situations you know, if there are problems let's say doctrinal problems or you know other issues in the church that need to be solved many a time god works through the prophets to uh, bring in uh, some settlement a good example is to go back to the book of acts you know you remember when uh, there was this whole issue about uh, the gentiles and if they were required to be circumcised and follow some of the jewish rituals uh, uh, the the church leaders came together and obviously there were some prophets who were part of that uh, leadership group who were helpful in uh, resolving the matter and, and coming out with a decree that helped the gentiles know exactly what they must be doing in order to follow god so uh, this is the progression okay uh, now not everyone will be a prophet okay uh, not everyone has a prophetic ministry okay uh, but all believers can prophesy to some extent you know every believer can hear from god say what god is saying uh, and also do what god wants us to do so we can all pursue the gift of prophecy and as the lord leads you know each one of us we can uh, you know come up higher in the uh, prophetic realm okay uh, so you know we will we will uh, also see that uh, it we will get into all these things later that just because someone's flowing in the prophetic we can't call them a prophet okay uh, because all believers can actually prophesy so uh, we'll we'll touch on you know what what uh, these different levels if you want to call uh, or, or graces uh, 
prophetic grace that God has given us, you know, how each one functions and, uh, you know, how do we, how do we understand if somebody is really in the prophetic office. All right. So that's a little bit about the prophetic gift, about uh, how the prophetic gift really works in the kingdom of God and in the, um, uh, you know, in the body of Christ. And in our notes here, uh, yeah, this, uh, publication is written by Pastor Ashish. He shares his own personal testimony. Uh, he talks about how there was a time in his life uh, where uh, he was going through certain challenges. And at that time, he was invited to uh, a skills workshop, a Christian skills workshop, where they were taught more about you know, flowing in the gifts of the spirit. And in that particular workshop, you know how uh, a man of God came up to him uh, and began to prophesy over his life uh, and you know pastor has recorded uh, some of the utterances the pro exact prophetic utterances this this uh, individual uh, spoke over his life and how uh, he till today you know he's seeing the fulfillment of many of these words uh, and you know this is uh, just in line with what isaiah chapter 44 verse 26 you know it says uh, god who confirms the word of his servant and performs the counsel of his messengers. So, you know, the prophetic word released over someone's life, it's amazing to, to hear testimonies like this because we see that somebody who is completely uh, unknown to us, and in this case, this minister of God, and at uh, this time, pastor was in the US, and he uh, has absolutely no connection to this man of God. But this man of God came in, and uh, uh, he was able to release words over pastor's life uh, until today. He passes seeing a fulfillment of these words that were spoken. So basically, it's it's a confirmation that these words were from God, and uh, you know when and when uh, a, a, a man of God releases uh, these words, uh, we also see here that God confirms. God confirms the word and uh, God performs what has been spoken. So uh, I'm sure you know many different ones of us have similar testimonies of the prophetic word and how um, it, it's so real okay, in each of our lives. Okay, all right. Uh, I didn't notice a raised hand here, so we will take that question and then we will continue. Uh, yes, Mangi, uh, can you please go ahead? Can you unmute yourself and ask a question, the question? Uh, sorry, okay, first uh, I yeah. think I forgot. I forgot. Oh, you forgot? <laughs> oh, okay, okay. No worries. No worries. You can come back with it later. Okay, thank you, Pastor. Okay, sure, great, wonderful. All right, uh, I think uh, Samuel has uh, a comment here. Uh, just a moment. Uh, I hope I haven't missed any other comment. Okay, yeah, we have Samuel's uh, comment here. It says, could you spend a minute explaining what prophecy is and is not? How is prophecy same, different from preaching, teaching, edifying? Um, when we say prophecy, are we limiting it to prophesying the future? Okay, very good question, Samuel. Okay, we'll just go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 3, which is uh, really an explanation of what prophecy is. Okay, and uh, so far I uh, talked about the basic gift of prophecy in which all believers can flow. And this basic gift of prophecy uh, is meant to do 1 Corinthians 14 verse 3 which says that when we prophesy, we edify, exhort, and comfort. Okay, We edify, exhort, and comfort people. All right? So that is what prophecy is supposed to do, the outcome of prophecy. So edify, exhort, and comfort. Now, I might ha get a word from God. Okay, uh, which may have nothing to say about my future. But when that word works in me, 
to do one of these edify me edify simply means build up strengthen okay so edify it strengthens me exhort exhort is encourage i just got encouraged by that word comfort okay comfort we we do understand that as well to console us console us and you know uh, reveal to us that yeah god is still there god loves us he's with us the prophetic the intention of the prophetic word is achieved okay so it need not necessarily have an element of the future in it uh, samuel i hope i've answered your question so it's not limited to uh, the future not at all uh, and in fact uh, many of the your question here you know how is prophecy same different from preaching teaching edifying okay i'll i'll come to that but we will delve deep into the gift of prophecy its function how to understand pers understand interpret personal prophecy very soon it's in chapter 9 and you know um, i hope i'm right with the number there but yeah we're going to uh, study that thoroughly okay so you you will have a great understanding but i hope this much helps for now now coming to uh, how how do we um understand preaching teaching edifying and prophecy okay so as we've been saying uh, samuel prophesying has to do with if you want to term it the now word okay so what is god saying about me right now or what is god saying about the situation so basically it's about the timing okay uh, hearing from god in the now that's what we call um, that's how we understand prophecy now as a preacher i can still exhort edify teach preach from the word of god which is good right But, uh, because the word of god at all times uh, speaks god's heart so that that is a given you know god's word um, it will it will do its work when we speak it so one can preach teach edify as a uh, usual but that need not be prophetic okay because uh, god's word it's valuable at all times so if i if i take any particular subject for example if i take a subject on the kindness of god and i teach on it right now it will be useful to the listeners no it will uh, as long as i am focusing you know on on the person of christ and i'm bringing out the truth of god's word it will it will do its work however prophecy is about tuning into what the spirit of god wants said right now so you know as i pray as i wait on the lord maybe god puts it on my heart and says okay i don't want you to be preaching about the kindness of god right now but i want you to be preaching on you know could be some other subject it could be um, a subject on uh, ministry it could be a subject on okay you know step out and evangelize maybe the time is right uh, for me to minister on certain topics and god wants me to do that so you know whenever i hear from god and i do in accordance to that i'm being prophetic so prophetic is the now word of god okay so as a preacher and a teacher i can be a prophetic teacher so i, I may not say thus says the lord or i may not say uh, you know uh, uh, god is saying not at all i might just be like okay good morning everyone today we will talk about um, how to share the gospel but i am being prophetic and nobody even knows about it because i know that in this given time this is the word that god wants spoken to his people okay so uh, that's how we would we would see the the working of the prophetic uh, in the uh, teaching preaching ministry samuel uh, doesn't make sense maybe i went all around the bush but uh, uh, does it give you an idea it 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 does pastor it does um uh, I, yeah. one clear differentiator is the now uh, yeah, what, what exactly. is god 
putting in my heart in the now but i'm exactly. also thinking like let's say you know um um so uh, it, um so as you were talking pastor um, i also kind of got a little bit of like how to differentiate prophecy from your calling like let's say you know you feel uh your calling or god is calling you to work uh, with the women like young women uh, in the city of mm-hmm. bangalore and you want to start a women's ministry so would yeah. that be a, again uh, would it be a prophetic calling or is it just your general life's purpose and and i mean so, so i'm getting a little fuzzy there but i think in the now bit uh, like explaining teaching the uh, a teaching versus a prophetic teaching i think that i get it but uh, another yeah. difference is how how to differentiate prophets i mean work, work i mean being a prophet uh, versus um fulfilling your calling because fulfilling your calling also s- in some ways seems like you're walking in the prophecy uh, mm. so yeah, thank you thank you pastor yeah sure sure sir thank you for that question yeah so uh you see the god has a call for each one of us uh, i think it's it, it is like walking with god you know, like abraham basically you it's it's a prophetic walk you keep hearing from him and god there is a life assignment that that god has for us but as we're hearing from him in each of those uh, seasons of our of our um, you know ministry journey we know what we should be engaging in the example you gave us women's ministry so okay god has called me for women's ministry but when should i step into it how should i step into it you know am i supposed to uh, uh, launch an organization uh, register an organization right away i'll have to be prophetic for me to uh, know the progression okay so i have to hear from god and god will give the vision god will give the clarity short term long term what i need to do right and that's how i can progress into uh, that calling of my life so there is a calling um, and each one of us every believer needs to hear from god in order to fulfill it so i, I that's a simple simple answer samuel but i hope that makes sense it does it does it's helping me pastor thank you so much thank you okay great great yeah thank you thank you yeah so uh, mangi you have a question i'll come to you i can see beth's question let me just uh, quickly answer hers uh, so beth asks can the prophetic be one of warning the prophets of old uh, brought many warnings to the israelites yes beth definitely you know, the prophetic uh, can also bring warning okay and uh, primarily we we see that in the old testament okay so uh, i know uh, maybe you asked this question because we just talked about the function of the prophetic okay where where we said that uh, the, the the basic gift of prophecy has to do with uh, edify exhort and comfort okay so we are talking about the basic gift of prophecy Okay, remember that however when one is uh, and we will talk about this later as well see it, generally prophesying believers we function in that realm of edify exhort comfort but as one uh, uh, is is called into let's say the office of the prophet okay so that's where this whole thing of warning all of that comes in so it it's a little more um Mm. uh how do i say it, it it's not everyone's thing uh god very specifically releases that through you know uh especially the prophets of god so uh for us uh, prophesying believers you know generally our word uh comes under the whole encouragement sort of a um uh, uh realm okay so i i hope that helps sir uh, beth definitely warning is a part of the prophetic okay so i okay sure great thank you but thanks for that all right mangi uh, please go ahead you can unmute and ask thank you pastor um when you 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 were teaching about uh gifts of prophecy to be lower than prophetic uh office 
the verse in number number numbers 11 29 when moses uh, gave some of the spirits to, to to the elders and two of them were left in the camp who were prophesying and i think just joshua or caleb who wanted to stop them from doing that and moses said is will it not be good that every single person will be a prophet will prophesy so my question is if every single desire, God, God's desire is for every single believer to prophesy, so what's what different it is? Uh, what's different there between the office and the, the believers prophesying? Because they are both both hearing God, they are both saying words of God. The only difference that's one has an office, one has been given the responsibility over a large number of people and the other one is just hearing God every day. It's like it's something that every believer should be doing, hearing God for themselves. And if every believer is not a prophet, how can they do the will of God since, since God commands us to do his will every day? So that's that's my question. Thank you. Pastor. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you, Mangi. Thank you for that question. So, you know, we will uh, see today's class is basically introduction. But uh, you know, since we are inquisitive and uh, some of these doubts, if it is clarified, it, it really helps us grasp more. And that's the reason, you know, I, I, I'll touch on it, but I won't go too deep. Uh, look at it this way, Mangi. See this this word profit, right? That's where we get stuck. The word profit has to do with the office. However. Every believer can prophesy. We don't have to call them prophets. Okay. Um, and you know what, what you said is that, yeah, uh, as we see, God's desire is very clear in the Old Testament, also in the New Testament, that God wants everyone to prophesy. So, you know, we, we can all just uh, flow in it. We can all just flow in it. But when it comes to a prophet, that person, uh, we use the term governmental responsibility, authority. So basically, they are accountable, you know, for for bigger words from God being spoken over, uh, you know, churches and nations and things like that. Okay, so you can you can look at it this way also when you talk about the teaching ministry. Okay, whatever I know, I share with with uh, the believers in church, my life group people, and all that. Whatever I know, I teach. But that doesn't make me a teacher, isn't it? Uh, we might look to our uh, senior pastor in church and say, hey, this is a teacher. And the Bible also says, hey, somebody who uh, ha who teaches God's word, they must rightly divide the word of God. You know, you you um, uh, you, you do it so that you, you're not ashamed and then uh, your judgment will be greater. So there are all those things that come into play when somebody is positioned in the office. Okay. However, a normal believer can still teach from God's word and it's fine. So when it comes to prophecy, it's like that. Everyone can prophesy because that's a simple thing and God wants everyone to prophesy. But, you know, when we're talking about the, we don't have to be a, a prophet to do that. When you talk about a prophet, a prophet is at another level and they are accountable to God for that responsibility which God has given them. I hope this clarifies uh, difference, Mangi. Yes, Pastor. Thank you. Okay, sure. sure. Thank you. Okay. So I'm just looking at the chat here. Uh, and Kennedy uh, says in line with Beth's question, okay, is it correct to assume that Jesus was prophet? Yes, of course. Uh, um, Kennedy, we, we, we do as, uh, I mean, he is a prophet. Jesus is a prophet. Okay, we'll come to that also. We'll be looking at uh, all the different people who prophesied in Scripture. So we'll come to that. Yeah, good questions, everyone. Uh, and this is how we, you know, get thinking and uh, get uh, warmed up for the sessions ahead. Okay, uh, great. We have a question from Susan. Susan, how to recognize a true prophecy or false one? Can someone always prophesy negative things about others? Okay, very good question, Susan. We will study uh, more in depth of this one uh, soon. But in a short way, true prophecy 
uh, leads us towards God. Okay, true prophecy will draw you to honor and worship God more. Okay, that is the first test actually, and of course there is the test of accuracy. So we will come to that. Uh, so that's how you recognize true prophecy. And the true prophecy will not make you do something outside of what. Uh, God's word is instructing us. Okay, so that's how we will evaluate it. Now, uh, the, the next part of your question was: Can someone always prophesy negative things about others? It's possible, Susan. So it is possible. But then, you know, we will also talk about you know, prophesying is one thing, but uh, interpreting whether it is a true prophecy or not, you know, that that is another thing. Interpreting. So we will talk about that again. Uh, can God always say negative things about us? No, God doesn't do that. So if somebody is doing that all the time, obviously something is wrong. Okay, so uh, I leave it at that, and I hope uh, you know that helps you. Great. Okay, so Devi, we'll look at your question before we uh, wrap. We just have a minute to go. Uh, to uh, Devi says uh, the prof. The prophecy is meant for the body of Christ as it is the way that we hear from God and to be able to function in his body as his children to help each other and be an avenue where God can speak through to and for his children. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So we we become a channel of, uh, you know, uh, his word to our brothers and sisters. So, uh, yes, everyone, with that, we will, we will have a wrap for the session today and we'll continue further uh, and if you have time it'll be good to just kind of go through uh, uh, scan through this book uh, and get an idea of uh, prophecy and we'll talk more about it i think we have a class tomorrow as well so let's pray and close uh, let me pray Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful time together. Thank you for bringing each one of us back, Lord. And thank you for the lives of, Lord, uh, every student, Lord, who's enrolled in this course. Lord, we pray that, Lord, you will stir us up, Lord. You will give us a listening ear. And God, that beyond just understanding, uh, Lord, the theory of things that, Lord, each one will begin to hear from you, Lord, in, in whatever ministry you've called us uh, for, Father God. And I just pray, Lord, just pray for your hand of blessing to be upon every student, Lord, and their families, Lord. And Father, especially in this season, Lord, we, we speak and declare your protection, Lord, over every life, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you once again for your goodness, your faithfulness in our lives, Lord. We give you praise and honor in Jesus' name we pray amen amen so thank you class god bless you we will connect again tomorrow have a, a blessed day thank, thank you pastor you, take care of you yeah thank you thank you so much everybody god bless bye thank you, Ma. bless you thank you thank you god bless Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kishan. Thank you, everyone.